Hi ladies and gentlemen, the last time you saw me, I was doing a review of the final E5000. Today, I'm back here again on PPTV to talk to you about the final E4000. So now the E4000 is part of the final E series family. Now the E series family, it's a very popular series from Final Audio that features a single dynamic driver and they are often shaped like a bullet. This, this series has been actually really, really popular and today we're going to talk more about the E4000. Initially, the series was launched with the E2000 and E3000 and just a while later, the higher end E4000 and E5000 came onto the scene. And the E-Series is built on the following concept to heighten resolution while reducing acoustic pressure. Essentially what it means is to increase resolution in the music being played by the earphones but reducing acoustic pressure such as the, you know, like the inner ear pressure that is built up over time and can get a bit uncomfortable. So the whole series is based on this concept, fundamentally giving you a more enjoyable listen, a more comfortable listen while also having really good resolution. So let's talk about some of the build and features of the E4000. The E4000 comes in a black anodized aluminum chassis, quite different from the E5000 that I mentioned earlier, which comes in stainless steel. Now, I really do like this black anodized finish. It is very sturdy. I actually treat my earphones not very well, to be honest with you. I just throw them in my bag and hope and pray that, you know, they survive from day to day. And I'm very pleased to report to you so far, the E4000 really helped up to the beating. And not only that, the E4000 also comes in a very nice MMCX termination. Now, MMCX is fantastic. You can just swap them out with other MMCX cable. It is very, very handy. And with that, it does not come with the Junko Shark cable that the E5000 comes with, but rather it comes in a rather, you know, generic black cable that is terminated to 3.5 mm. Now, I really like the option that they give you with, the, with this cable. It is very, very handy. And I don't see anything wrong with the current cable, but if you really want an upgrade path, you can definitely swap out the cables to give yourself an upgrade. This is not a multiple driver setup. So with a single 6.4 mm driver, the E4000 is able to really fill up the whole acoustic range, the whole musical range with music with ease. And it does it in a very coherent manner. And the final E4000 comes with the popular final type E ear tips. This ear tips has been very popular and final has been very kind to use them on this ear tips as well. Not only that, they actually provide you with them in a very very nice case. Let me show you how they look like with the magic of editing. And voila, they actually come in this really really nice carrying case. So Final really has thought about everything. All your ear tips can be easily classified and just sorted. Put in a nice case and you can choose them whenever you like. I use this as my travel option and I just bring them around as I see fit. With regards to fit, these earphones come in a very nice bullet shape. I mean, it's a rather tried and true design. They are quite ergonomic to tell the truth. They fit in your ear in a well, standard top-down manner or you can actually wear them this, in this manner in a top-down manner which I actually truly prefer because it really cuts out my points by a lot. Either way, both of them are equally comfortable. They are not intrusive in any single way. I actually wear them on hours on end so I find them really comfortable. One thing to note is that you have to find the right size for your ear tips. I generally use the medium size and I find them to work very, very well. Let's talk about sound. With regards to sound, I find the E4000 to have a mild V shape. Now, it's not as warm sounding as the E5000, but I would really just consider the E4000 to sound more neutral, natural, more natural than anything else. And with regards to bass on the E4000, I find that the E4000 has a very linear bass response. Now, what does this mean? I just find that the bass frequencies Basically, you know, you can just hear them from sub bass all the way to mid bass. It comes in very linear. There is just a small bump towards mid bass to make it a bit more exciting. Now, to add on to that, I find that the E4000 has bass that has a lot of resolution. You can actually hear the textures of the bass frequencies very well. And if they are concurrent running bass lines, it actually plays to the E4000 strength as you can hear the layers and the very nice harmonic decays as well. There is also none of that bass smeariness that you get with lower end earphones. In fact, it sounds very, very clean. I think the most interesting part about the bass of the E4000 is that there is a very nice natural decay to the sound. And it's not a very fast artificial sort of decay, but rather it is very, very natural sounding. Now, I would say that the bass of the E4000 is very linear. There is only one exception with regards to mid bass, whereby it comes up to a teeny tiny hump whereby
it sounds very natural it's not exaggerated in any way you know some earphones they get a lot of mid bass and it sounds like there's a lot of booms but this is not the one in fact it sounds like a gentle mid bass something to make it sound a bit more exciting this allows the bass to have good details and excellent transient response so it also allows the bass to have no smearing within the bass and sub bass frequencies which makes it very very clean and concise there is also a very nice decay to the e4000 whereby it sounds natural and the decay is not overly fast whereby it can sounds unnaturally clean it sounds very natural because of its natural soundingness it actually allows bass in music to sound very technically competent as well with regards to mid range vocals rather i would say that they are extremely liquid sounding mid range is smooth but does not scream on details it actually has very good weight and presence there isn't any bleed from any other frequencies into the mid range such as the bass being into the mid range there isn't any of that in the e4000 this lends itself to a very pristine kind of vocal representation whereby you get a very thick concise vocals where you can hear many of the micro nonsense that the singer is actually singing the treble of the e4000 also lends an edge to the mid range this allows the mid range to actually have a sort of body that is very clear now this is not excessive whereby it sounds unnaturally sharpened it only lends enough for the mid range to have a sort of edge to let it stand out amongst the bass and high range frequencies there is enough high harmonics in the e4000 for it to sound balanced what this means is that your high frequencies in the mid range actually it's there and very present so it's not very rolled off so you get a very very natural vocal sound it's not like one of those whereby you cut off the total high harmonics and mid range just sounds abnormally thick and weird now that happens with the e4000 it is actually very very natural sounding let's talk about the final audio e4000's treble now the treble performance of the e4000 is actually very admirable it actually extends a little better than the E5000 but not overly done it's a bit more present the E5000 is a bit more subdued but it's not to the point where it becomes grating or annoying it handles bright instruments well such as cymbals and hi-hat you get all the sizzle that comes with this type of instrument one point to note about the E4000 is that the high frequencies does not extend to the ultra high frequencies whereby you get a lot of air with nice airy sound stage it extends well but not to the extent next let's talk about soundstage the first component of soundstage that is the width the e4000 actually does in a manner that is actually moderately wide i will not say it's the widest but it does enough to give you an impression that it is somewhat large i will not say it's wide like a concert hall but it's more like wide like a small jazz club the reason for this is that it is a rather smooth listen so when it's a bit smooth you don't get the absolutely best separation which i'll talk about it later so your perception of soundstage because it is not absolutely clear and pristine and pinpoint it narrows down by a little bit height is a similar story as well because of its rather smooth large sounding timber one thing about the e4000 is that because of that you do not get like extreme tallness it is still tall and i would say it is moderately good but it is not the kind of head space that you would think you would have in a grand concert hall and with regards to depth again because of its liquid vocals you know it's rather smooth signature depth is also average in terms of depth you can still tell which instruments are further away and which instruments are nearer but they are not separated to the point whereby it is very clear and this kind of affects depth somewhat you still can make which is further and which is nearer it's just that it's not absolutely the tightest like it has biting clarity on how far or near the instruments are there is still depth perception and you can definitely hear it and lastly positioning positioning of the e4000 is average as well you can make out where the instruments are and they sound moderately separate from other instruments like you can definitely tell where the trombones are where the trumpets are where the bassoon is that kind of thing especially if you're listening to orchestral music with regards to pop it's more common you can definitely hear the vocals usually in the center with your bass to the left or the right depending on the mix yeah so position is actually generally okay it's not say class leading but it is definitely quite good now the e4000 and e5000 together particularly requires quite a bit of power so if you're running them through your phone generally phones do not have enough juice to power them yes they still can provide 
adequate volume where you know they sound quite okay but to take them to the next level one should consider actually using a dongle such as the Lotto 4 s one or even better you could use a proper DAP a proper DAP would give it all the boost that it needs to sound fantastic also to add I actually use the E4000 and E5000 with a proper headphone amplifier now this might be overkill for a portable device but I can assure you that geez guys the E4000 and E5000 really scales extremely well if you give it enough power I used it with the Hugo 2 and this thing sounds more expensive than it actually is a quick versus the E5000 that I reviewed previously the E5000 it's much warmer and much more intimate earphone compared to the E4000 that is a bit more balanced. Now, both of them do share similar tonal characteristics whereby both are equally lush and they have a rather liquid signature. It's just that the E5000 is a bit more warm and a bit more thick sounding. The E4000 is just a hair leaner. In conclusion, the E4000 provides excellent value for its price point. You get liquid vocals, good coherence, good sound stage on the whole the only thing for you to consider is that these things do require a bit of power and if you're willing to feed them this power that they so crave you'll be duly rewarded and with that my name is kenneth from pptv do like and subscribe in the icon somewhere below and i hope to see you very very soon with more earphones comparison see you next time